Now we talk about part of joyful victory about how to overcome all sins. Now many Christians don't think that it's necessary to overcome all sins. They think that, well, I'm good enough in some areas, you know, some other sins is too difficult to overcome all of it. And also, some people, now one problem is, they don't think certain behavior are sins. Because some people don't think sadness is sin. Now, I want to say that, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Whenever we fall short of the glory of God, we are sinning. Whenever we are not showing the glory of God in our lives, for instance, when we are sad, when we worry about things, when we have no, no faith, actually when we cannot live like the saints in heaven, we have sinned already. Now we are not saved by committing no sins. We are saved by grace through faith. When we trust in Jesus as our Savior, we are saved. But when we are saved, we don't want to live in sin. No one is perfect. But we know that sins are very destructive. And we don't want to let any sin stay in our lives. Now one reason many people stay in sin is that they don't regard, you know, like sadness or, or frustration and uh, worry or, as sins. <laughs> and some people even say, well, when they commit adultery, they say, I ask Jesus to forgive me, so there's not sin. Now the Bible has very serious warnings about that. That people who commit this can, you know, they don't, they are not in the book of life. They cannot, eternal, they cannot inherit eternal life. And also some people say, I cannot over, I, you know, I don't overcome the sins because it's impossible. Now some people have these wrong teachings. They'll say, are you perfect? So if you're not perfect, and I sin too, so what's the matter? So they say nobody is perfect, so when I sin, it's okay. Or some people say, I want to overcome the sins, but I just cannot. Now, all these are lies that we know that sins are very destructive. Okay, in uh, John five fourteen. Now the man, Jesus has healed a man who has 38 years of sickness. Okay, now would you read the English and the Chinese for me? I'll get something. Um, 
<laughs> See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Nuevo. Okay, now read in your language. La banga tu dayo kono nana te, e chitwe singo bubich ne moku tu kako. Okay, so what it, what it says there is that Jesus said to the man, Sin no more, if not, the worst thing will happen to you. Now, what can happen to him? Because the Bible also said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse. Um, 27, verse 27 here. And do not give the devil a foothold. When we sin, we are giving the Satan, uh, the devil a foothold. That means he can enter the, the person's life. And whenever Satan enters someone's life, he comes to steal and destroy and, and kill. Satan never does anything good. So whenever we sin, we are giving Satan a Foothold, and he will steal and destroy from our life. And then when Satan comes in, so something more serious will happen. That means, you know, he can first, you know, I've heard this from people who have committed adultery or Lust or different sins, and then they found the devil attack them. Abantu abeni gide mize jo bukaba ne mize je fanyiza konge jo wenzi baba de ba yoko ba yoke la kwebati. That this is one way that the person is possessed by demons. Mweno ye yugeli yoka yoka omuntu jawa mbwa mwe mizim. And also the person can lose the joy of the Lord. Nje omuntu asubro kuva mwe sanyuli amukama. And he can lose the favor of the Lord. And also it can become a habit for him to sin. That Satan and sin will continue to destroy this person. You know, I, I have to admit to you that in the past I had days that I fell into sin. But I found that first in my heart I don't have peace. I feel guilty. And also I lose strength to face to overcome sins. And I you know in those days I felt I suffer so much. Now I found that before, you know, I pay attention to what happened inside me. Before I sin, I might have reasons to tell myself it's okay to sin. Before I sin, I might have reasons to tell myself it's okay to sin. Before I sin, I might have reasons to tell myself it's okay to sin. Before I sin, I might have reasons to tell myself it's okay to sin. Before I sin, I might have reasons to tell myself it's okay to sin. Before I sin, I might have reasons to tell myself it's okay to sin. Before I sin, I might have reasons to tell myself it's okay to sin. And then, even after I ask him to forgive me, I find no peace. And I, I hate this kind of relationship with God that I really worry. That I did not have freedom and joy. So I hate the sin so much that I say I don't want to sin anymore. And then I, 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 I
But in those days, I found no ways yet how to overcome all sins. Until I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Now here I would talk more about the consequence of sin. Now just now I said that the serious things can happen to us. What are the serious things? Demons can attack. The person loses the joy and the strength from the Lord. He has no motivation to follow God. He loses the perfect plan of God. And his family and his life can be destroyed. Now even now, if I know all these teachings, Teachings. Even now, if I, you know, uh, have all these teachings from God, but if I let myself stay in sin, the way to ministry can be closed. And no, it's very destructive. Let me ask you, do you want to throw your money into the ocean? Do you want to throw your life in the ocean? If we sin for sure, we'll waste our life. Okay, now this is uh, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. The acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality, impurity. The boundary, you can find a, your Bible. Yeah, I'll, I'll read from the English person and you'll read from this. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, death, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Um, let me find it here. Galatians 5. He found it. He found it. For he doesn't have a Uganda one. Okay, I've got oh. it here. 519 to 21. Now, if you have to be able to do it, you can do it. You can do it. You Okwe yaula, okwe salamu, etima, obutami ivu, ebinyumu, nebilinge ebyo, nsoko okubabu ulira kwe ebyo, uh, nga, nga vye nasoka, okubabu ulira nti. Bali, abako ya ebilinge ebyo, tibali sikila kwa kapa kwa katonda. Ok, we are not saved by doing good. Bana ite tulo kore wa, rakona hulonji. Yeah. But when we are saved, our faith will, if the faith is living, it will bear fruit. Yeah. If there if it's not bearing fruit, there is something wrong with the faith. And even if a person had real faith, but if he continue to let sin control him, his heart will become hardened. And then, and then he'll be farther and farther away from God. Because he doesn't Now imagine someone is committing adultery. Now imagine that. How would he feel inside? He would feel very guilty. Now he might want to pray to ask God to forgive him. And then the next day he commits adultery again. He begins to question whether God will forgive him. 
And also his sin will harden his heart. And he said, everyone is a sinner. So I'm a sinner too. God will forgive me. And he might have lies inside him. And his heart is hardened. For sure he won't be having an intimate relationship with God. Amazima, omuntu ajja kubata nyumirwa nkola gana ya chime metene katonda. And gradually he will say it's okay not to go to church. Era kina gendo okuva munga we baga amante eliyo kusaba ya sigala mu nyumba ye. It's okay not to, you know, to pray and conf and repent. Ebe byo kuleka na leka na bibaleka na twabira badda mu balinde nabo bajja kugwa. And the person can eventually be hardened that he will come to God anymore. And God can also reject this person when he continues to sin. So when it says here, sexual immorality and idolatry hatred now, let me ask you, is there sometimes hatred also among Christians? Now, discord, that means division. Now, jealousy. Or selfish ambition. And then, or drunkenness. Now, all this, the Bible says, more that, that people who commit this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Therefore, people who are sinning, and they think they repent. Let me say this. There are different kinds of repentance. Some people repent like this. God forgive me. Okay, I've repented. And so I'm forgiven. <laughs> Let me tell you one example. I know a, uh, I know a uh, Christian girl Actually, through her, uh, her relative, that she is, you know, having a date, dating a, a man in the church. And this girl found out that he had maybe four or five other girlfriends before. Kakati, that guy. That the guy had four or five. Before, and he might have sexual relationship with a few of them. And he is asking the girl to have sexual relationship with him. And then when this relative heard about this, she told me, she told me she told me she told me she and I talked with this girl now the girl was not very convinced it, it took me a long time to talk to her now first you know the, the guy was dating another girl at the same time as he was dating this girl too. And this guy takes dating as very lightly. And he has sexual relationship with someone, and then he has sexual relationship with another one. Now it sounds like to me that he's not a real Christian at all. And he thought it's okay that I have sex with this woman, and then Oh, there's something 
bad about this girl, so I go to another girl and have sex with that other girl. And then the girl told me this guy is doing ministry in the church. And then so he thought that she thought that he is a strong Christian. I said serving God doesn't mean he is a strong Christian. <laughs> Now I tried to, you know, talk with this girl to, you know, to separate from this guy. Because this guy changed girlfriends very quickly. And he has sex with different people. He doesn't have real repentance. Now for a while the girl was a little convinced, a little convinced. But still she did not take any action. She did not suffer from the guy. So I told her relative. I think you should talk to their pastor. The, the pastor of this man who is using this young man in ministry. Because he's committed adultery with the girls in the church. So this relative talked to the pastor about it. But she found that the pastor was not very serious about this. He would handle it. He would handle it. He would handle the problem. But it sounds like from how he talks, it's not very serious handling. Now the pastor did suggest the guy to separate from the from the from the girl. To separate, you know, to not, they don't see each other. That okay. the pastor did suggest. Kati pasta na sarau na ganti wano beta gakuwa uliwa omwa ge decha na muka komra la sigale muchibuga. But he did not take strong action. Nae te ya chi te ya chi te ya chi fa akoti ya chi tualanga chikuru. To save that girl. Okay, zako kro kro mwalo. Now, and then the guy said to the girl. Kati o mufsadi na gambo mwala. The relative of the girl has no right to tell the pastor. He said, because I've repented to God, and God has forgiven me, therefore, the relative has no right to tell my pastor. Now, let me ask you, is this true? He said, I have prayed to God. God forgive me. And God forgives me. Therefore, no one has to talk to my pastor. Let me ask you, is this right? Now, if you don't have to talk to him, is he showing real repentance? He continued to want to have sex with this girl. It's not repentance. And he did not go back to these girls and really repent to these girls. That he has sex with these girls and then left them. So he really has not repented. Now, even if he has repented, this is a sin that has hurt different people. 
It is something that the pastor has to do to help restore these girls. And help this guy to really hate the sin and turn away from the sin. So a divine repentance like this. Repentance is not just saying, God, I'm sorry, forgive me. Now, some people say, I repent to God, I say to God, I'm sorry, and then that's repentance, and then God will forgive me. But actually, according to the Bible, it's a contrite heart, that a heart that is really sorry for his sin. Psalm 51, 17. The sacrifices of God are, are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart those of God you will not despise. That means a heart that is broken, that is very sad for his sins. And contrite heart, really sorry for his sins. Really feel bad about the sins. Because sins are like cancer. Sins will kill. Even worse than cancer. So when I define repentance, I would describe it like this. The person is really sorry for his sin. And he hates the sin. I hate this sin because this sin will destroy my life. I hate this sin because this will give Satan a, a foothold. I hate this sin because it will destroy my life. So that I would go down more and more and more. I will, that Satan will steal everything from me. And Satan will kill me if I continue to sin. So when we hate it, then we won't follow sin and we will depart from it. Let me ask you, do you like to live in a washroom and your toilet up back there? <laughs> Do you like to sleep over there? <laughs> if you don't like to sleep there, <laughs> I hope you hate sin like you hate that smell. Oh, yeah. And then you want to walk away from it as soon as you finish going to the restroom. Then so I hope you understand the Bible does tell us the seriousness of sins. And then Galatians 6, 8. Whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. So if we sows to follow our flesh, our sinful desire, there will be destruction. Let me ask you, do you sometimes get a knife? Let's try and cut myself. Cut on my ear. Cut on my nose. Do you do that to yourself? Sins is like that. Sins are like that. It will destroy your whole life. So just now we saw that sin will destroy. Sin will give Satan a foothold. And the worst thing will happen to us. We become unhappy. 
we can, you know, is possessed by demon. And we will lose the joy of the Lord. And we will lose the perfect plan of God. And finally, the person can lose salvation. Isn't that serious? But when people are in sins, for instance, when people are in adultery, the eyes are blind. They don't see that they are into eternal damnation. They will say, I'll ask God to forgive me later. Let me tell you about a girl and a guy, what happened. Later, this girl did not want to talk to their relative again. She doesn't want to take any more advice. And she continued to date this guy. I don't know what will happen. There can be total destruction of both of their lives. And you know, when people are in sins like that, they seem to be blind to the truth. The mind is just, the mind is just on having fun. Getting what they get. But when we follow God's way, we can have joy and strength. Uh, we can have provision. The perfect plan of God. And a way to glory. To bless many people. Our life will be lifted up. And God will bless our marriage. Too, then we have a better marriage than people finding, you know, the temporary happiness from in, uh, from uh, adultery. So I hope that you see that the Happiness of sin is just temporary. Very soon pain will come. When this guy is interested in a girl, very soon this girl will be very unhappy. She will be totally hurt. So I we all hope that, I hope that we all say that sins are terrible, say it together. That we want to hate sin and give up sin and live in a holy way. Now, now let me tell you, the holiness of God is very beautiful. When you go to heaven, if on earth there is someone who doesn't like you, a Christian who doesn't like you. Now let me tell you, even Christians dislike each other can be dangerous. And Jesus did warn against that. And Jesus said, if you do not forgive your brothers, then God, the Father will not forgive you too. Yes, we are man. If you touch on you, I'm Uganda. Now we can't let you go. Now there is such a story of uh, uh, in uh, Reinhard Bon uh, Bronkis meeting. There was a man, a pastor, who gave a testimony. Reinhard Bronki. Kakati orumu mu kuweleza kwa mu kuweleza kwa mu kumbuli zwendi kwa baita Reinhard Bronki walwo musadja. Now this pastor, he had a car accident. And after a while, he died. And then he went to heaven. He saw all the saints praising God. He also saw the buildings uh, that God has prepared for the saints. And then the angel said, I'll take you to hell now. 
Malaika na mugama ntingena kutuwala mugulu. And then he went to hell and see all these people suffering. Na mtuwala na mulaga abantu manuru nanga babu na abona. And he saw a pastor there. Na labo musumbo ono. The pastor said, I have stolen from the church. O musumbo yonga ganti ze kanisa nareka njibyo kukama robu kamazi. And so I came to hell here. Kakati echande se mugeye na wana. I'm willing to give up the money. Nze njaga nansa sule nsimbi yeyo. So I can go to heaven. Nso vlo gena mugulu. But it was too late. And also we don't go to heaven by giving up the money. True repentance and trusting in Jesus. Now why would some pastors steal from the church? They might have an excuse. I'm in short of money now. Let's just take some money from the church. Later I'll return it. And then later he has more problems. Oh, the church needs to help me. So I take more money to help me. Now he starts to give false excuses. I'm serving the church. I'm in need of money. So I just take more from the offering to help myself. Now, if he needs money, he should tell the leaders and they have a meeting and they decide to raise the salary of the pastor that is the right way but if he secretly steal from the church he, you know it's like in Galatians chapter 5 just now we read you know the fruit of the flesh that this person might not inherit eternal life so you know don't think that you know you are strong in Jesus now that you won't fall into sin. Anybody can fall into sin. Let me tell you, if there is a handsome man or a beautiful woman, they'll tell you, I like you. <laughs> Let me tell you, you're so attractive. <laughs> Let's have fun. <laughs> and then you forget about everything we talk about. You know, I I have many people in the church they say, yes, I agree with you, Pastor. <laughs> but when they meet a boyfriend or girlfriend, they forget everything. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to say is the temptation of sins are very strong. And, and Satan's have a way to make you lie. To say it's not serious. It's like when he lied to Eve. It doesn't matter. God is hiding something good from you. When you eat, then your eyes will become bright. So Satan has a way to lie to us. And I hope that we are sensitive to that. I want to tell you that. I have tasted the difficulties in sin. And I've tasted the joy of the Lord. And how God can lift my life up. I've made up my mind not to give in to sin anymore. And I will tell you in a moment how to overcome sin. Now let me let me say more about, can someone get the word out there first? Okay, now, let me say this, the beauty of holiness. 
So one day you go to heaven and you see someone who dislikes you on earth. Someone who dislikes you on earth. And then you go to heaven and then the person will say to you, Wow, you are here and welcome you here. And he will say, I'm very happy to see you here. And you say, it was so wonderful. <laughs> On earth you had some negative feelings toward me. But now you like me from your hearts. There is nothing bad between us anymore. Isn't holiness beautiful? Let me ask you in your family. Is it holy like that? Is your relationship with a family member totally without any kind of sin and worry and negative thinking? Let me ask you. Do you have holiness in your family that you really enjoy it? Holiness means to love God and love people and really have nothing bad in between people. Let me ask you, do you have holiness in your home? It's all peaceful and happy. Humbling each other. How many of you have that in your family? Can you raise your hand? How many have that real holiness in your home? It's not so easy to have that, right? But if you work on it, we really forgive each other. At first, you're not affected by the sinful behavior. And step by step, you know, you try to change them by loving them. Now, even if they don't change, we still continue love. And then your family will become better and better. Isn't it beautiful to have holiness in a home? How about in a church? Are there sins in the church? If there is no sin and everyone loves each other and forgives each other, isn't it beautiful? So I found that everything about God is beautiful. And the Bible says that we love God and love people. His love and His holiness are both beautiful. So I hope you say, I long for the holiness of God. God. I don't want any anger anymore. I don't want any negative feeling anymore. I want to love God totally and live in holiness. And God is happy with me. And God blesses me. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to say this. To please God is not difficult. When we sincerely want to please God, it's not hard at all. When we have sinned, we say, well, I'm really sorry for my sins. I hate the sin because I know it will destroy my life. Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive my sins. Please help me to change. Then God is very happy. And any step we can take to follow the holiness of God, God is very happy. God is not like people. Now for people, if you have done something good, they will always say, you have something else you need to work on. But for God, anytime you repent, 
and trying to obey God even though when we are not perfect God is still very happy but we don't stay in those sins when we still have sins we ask God to forgive and then we handle it Okay, now I give you a five step to victory. Write that down. Five steps to victory. This is what God has guided me to understand. Actually, this is God's way of handling our problem. Okay, the first step. Esoka. Aware. Now this can apply to sins, five steps to victory. The first is aware. It, it can be aware of sins or aware of negative thinking or feelings. Okay, first step is aware. I know that I don't like someone. I know that I'm negative thinking. I know there are negative feelings and I'm unhappy. First step is aware. Second step, I know it's destructive. It is worse than cancer. It's very important. For instance, if someone doesn't like us, someone says, I don't like you. And then it's very natural for us to say that I'm very unhappy and I don't like him too. Isn't it true? Yes. Yes. Now I find that now how many of you drive here? Okay. Now, let, me, let me tell you that for cars there are two kinds. One is automatic transmission. When you have a car with automatic transmission, you just release the, if the car has been started, you release the brake. The car can start to go forward. Now there is also the manual transmission. It's much more complicated, you know, this one. You step on the clutch. You change the gear. You release the clutch. You step on the gas. <laughs> and then by the point that when the transmission comes in, you have to put in more gas. Let me tell you, if someone says, I don't like you, you have to put more gas. What is the automatic transmission? Tra automatic transmission is gambetia. Your Three. natural reaction. Uh, um, uh, ka enemy within what was your natural reaction? In our heart, we'll say, I don't like you too. <laughs> or we're angry. <laughs> or we're angry. <laughs> That's the automatic, it's automatic for us to sin. Now, if for us to handle it, like what I said this morning, and we say, well, this is not good, this is garbage from him, from his sinful nature, I don't have to take it seriously, I don't have to continue to feel bad, now, I want to say that all people naturally feel bad. Even for me. But it depends on when, how you handle it, how fast you handle it. Sometimes a few seconds. That's great success. Great success if you can handle it in a few seconds. Kakati bobango tokiriza lunaku kuziba njuba kugwa kunanka niyo ogobo wangu demangu. 
Now for some people it's half an hour. It's still quite good. Some people may take a few days. But some people stay angry for decades. For years. Have you heard of some people who hate their husband or wife because of something they did in the past? They never got over it. I, I want to say is. Like the manual transmission, you, you have to say this is from a sinful nature. <laughs> it's garbage. I don't have the ticket. God loves me. It is a wonderful plan for me. So I choose to obey God. And I don't have to take what it says. I can have compassion on him and forgive him. Is this automatic? Is this automatic? And automatic? No, no, no. It has to be an intentional action. So we want to overcome sins. The second step is I have to understand that this is destruction. Destructive. That I have to take care of it. The longer we let the anger stay in our heart, the more damage it will be to my life. And then number three. Just now I said, first, aware. Second, destructive. Number three, what does the Bible tell me to do? The Bible tells me to forgive. And not to be affected by evil people. And forgive and bless, and forgive and bless the person. And number four. Pray for strength. Number five, choose to obey. Mm. Now, I, found, I found the key to overcoming sins. When you dislike someone, when we are aware of it, immediately we say, This will destroy my life. And don't let the dislike stay in your life. And you have to say, I'm going to change that. 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 Okay, thank you for reminding me. I'll work on it. I'll work on it. And you, can, you can help me not to be foolish. Amen. Now, there are different ways to respond. Now, the first one is I respond to God. That is victory. Now, the second one is to respond to victory. Now, the third one is to respond to God. Not to be overwhelmed by the sin. But I am higher than the sinful ways. And I can say wise words to him. I can say wise words. To him. 